Okay, and finally, question 15 has given us the curve of x sine squared x, and we're finding the area between pi over 2 and pi. So in other words, we're looking to find the answer to Now, you should hopefully recognise that this is something that partial f um, integration by parts will be useful for. So the integration by parts formula is that uv dash is equal to uv minus the integral of u dash v. In other words, we want to differentiate something that we're going to call u, which is going to be vx, and integrate something that we're calling v dash, and the idea is that this u term will turn into something that will essentially turn into a constant or will combine with the v to become something we can integrate straight away. Um, so it's always the polynomial unless there's an L log x involved. If you had x ln x or x squared ln x or something like that, the ln x would be the thing you would want to differentiate and the polynomial part, the x squared part, will be the thing you want to integrate. So, easiest thing I find is to write down what u and u dash are, and what v dash and v are. And then we could just plug everything into the formula. x is u, so u dash is 1. This one's a bit trickier because we've got sine squared x here. So they're going to make us do a bit more work to integrate this. So let's do that separately. To integrate a sine squared x, we have to remember the, the um, double angle formula. Weirdly, for cos 2x, it's cos 2x that's going to be useful for sine squared x and for cos squared x. So cos 2x, if you remember, is cos squared x minus sine squared x. But we can rewrite that either in terms of just cos squared or just sine squared. We want to write it as sine squared because that's what we're working with. So if I replaced cos squared x with 1 minus sine squared and then took this one away as well, we'd end up with 1 minus 2 sine squared x for cos 2x. So we can rearrange this and say that sine squared x is something to do with a 1 and a cos 2x. So if I add the 2 sine squared x to the other side, I'm going to have to halve it because we've only got sine squared x, not, not a 2 sine squared x. So that's going to be a half minus a half of cos 2x. So that's what that's equal to. They're the same thing. But this can be integrated. When we integrate this, we get a half x, so x over 2. Integrate cos, you get minus. Integrate minus cos, you get minus sine. The signs stay the same for cos to sine. Um, that would integrate to sine 2x, but we need to divide by the coefficient of x. So that's dividing by 2, but there's already a 2, so that's going to become 4. So... Even though that was a little bit of work to get started, we're now ready to use the um, integration by parts formula. So let's do that at the side here. So the integral, the area, is going to be um, uv, so x, times this, x over 2 minus sine 2x over 4 minus the integral of u dash v. u dash v is 1 times the inter times this. So that's just going to be x over 2 minus sine 2x over 4. Now, we've got a little bit more stuff to do here, but at least both of these things can be integrated straight away. We can integrate each of those parts. May as well expand the brackets. x squared over 2 minus x sine 2x over 4 minus, I'm now going to integrate this, so x squared over 4 and we've got a plus here, we've got a minus and a minus 
but when you integrate sine you get minus cos so these are the things where these are the places where things go wrong with all these minuses especially in integration by parts so just to just to explain what i've done there that that's going to give us a plus integrate sine 2x over 4 but when you integrate a sine you get a minus cos so that's going to be minus cos 2x and we're going to divide by the 2 again so that's going to be dividing by 8. right that's all been integrated now at least and we've just got to put our limits in which i believe with pi over 2 and pi yeah so substituting pi in we're going to get pi squared over 2 sine of 2 pi is 0 so that bit's going to be 0 this is going to be pi squared over 4 and cos of 2 pi if you think about the graph is 1 so we're taking away an eighth here for pi over 2 we're going to have pi squared over 2 squared times the 2 as well so that's going to be over 8 sine of pi is 0 again so this is going to be 0 for a second time here we're going to have pi squared over 2 squared which is 4 times 4 as well which is 16 and here we're going to have cos of pi and cos of pi is minus 1 so that's going to be plus an eighth okay so what pi squareds have we got let's have a look we've got a half we've got minus a quarter we've got minus an eighth and we've got minus a sixteenth. No, we've got plus a sixteenth. Minus and a minus is a plus. And we've also got a minus an eighth and another minus an eighth. So a half minus a quarter minus an eighth. Plus a sixteenth. is 3 over 16 so we've got 3 pi squared over 16 and minus an eighth minus another eighth is going to be minus a quarter 